short bio on who is Ron Haskins, and then we'll build on that in terms of the Visionary Institute. That's a good question. Um, always been asked that question, and um, a lot of things run around in my mind. But real quick, um, the Ron Haskins before was a man that was trying to find out who was Ron Haskins. And so for years, Ron Haskins uh, never knew who he was. Mm. Always helping other people, but never helping himself. So he always admired other people and wanted to be like other people. But when it came time to find out who he was and doing what he wanted to do and, and being comfortable in himself and sure of himself, never had that. And so um, when I got saved and, and, and came to God and gave him my life, I thought that would help. But every time I prayed and said, not my will, Lord, but your will be done, I would get up and take my will back. <laughs> so the Lord said, I have to help this boy. Mm. And so he had to break me. And then once when I got broken and things happened in my life where I couldn't, you know, rely on myself anymore, I relied on him. And that's when I found who I was. So now I learned that through brokenness, you can find out who you are. And then God could put it all back together. And so now I know who Ron Haskins is. Ron Haskins is a servant leader a man that um, has a purpose of reaching people to help them to be the best that they can be because when they succeed, they're not succeed. And that brings me joy and happiness. Mm, wow, that's powerful. <laughs> brother. You're already hitting the ground running and I, I appreciate that, especially the part about that transformation and recognizing who you are, that awareness of who you are and, and then that kind of bring you in into the fullness of God and what he called you to do. Talk about the Visionary Institute and how that was birthed out of this state of brokenness and this transformation of renewed mind. Well, for years I've always been trying to find out what I want to do. Um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an actor. I always wanted to please people. You know, I wanted people to come watch me and say, man, he's a great actor, a great action hero. I want to be like Ron. I wanted to be a football player. Uh, when them things didn't happen, I started working around that. So I uh, got into acting a little bit did things in college, became a coach, started helping kids, and kind of maybe living my dream through them and not realizing that I was helping them to be, you know, what they wanted to be. And so the Visionary Institute came about that when I was working in corporate services um, and working with Fortune 500 companies, I was a um, district, I was a manager, I was a director, a general manager, and my job was to help people, you know, help them be successful, work with the client. And then I start realizing that I'm coaching. You know, these people call, call me up and say, Ron, guess what? Because of, you know, your training and your tools and your, you know, management techniques, now I'm a manager. You know, you help me to be successful. I'm like, wow. And so I realized that what can I do to be able to do this where I can make my ministry my means? Mm -hmm. And then I came across, you know, coaching, started studying it, started realizing that I've been doing this all along. Now I can become my means. And so I started defining it and asking the Lord to give me a vision on, on, on my purpose. And that's how that title, the Visionary Institute, came about. It's, it's, a, it's a vision and it's a continuum of all different type of methods to help people, you know, reach their goals or aspiration and dreams. Mm, wow, that's beautiful. I know you mentioned a word and, and I went to your website and part of it have self-assessment. I like that self-assessment in terms of determining where you are. Let's, let's, let's kind of qualify you. I know you've been certified and, <laughs> and you have the degree and you have the credentials in terms of being a coach. So let's just talk about how your brokenness now even serve as an instrument in you helping people to get over the obstacles that they're challenged with. Well, I've learned being in ministry that in order to have a testimony, you have to go through a test. In order to have a message, you have to go through some mess. Mm -hmm. And I went through both. <laughs> And uh, I remember um, speaking at a um, conference one time. It was, it was a healing conference. I got invited to speak, and I got invited to speak to the men. And on my way there, I remember um, talking to one of the brethren in my church, and I said, God got a special ministry for me. The Lord, you know, has called me to reach a lot of men. Um, I was um, actually uh, head of our um, men's uh, institute in our church. And I just said, man, God's going to bless me with um, touching men all over the world because I love people. And it wasn't really happening. And you know, you got big dreams. And like Joseph, you know, you, you know how he had that dream. God had to, had to break them down. And so when I went and did this conference, after it was over, a prophet came up and um, you know, spoke. And then after they, be, when they, before they got ready to turn the um, service over, they said, I want Ron Haskins to come back up here. So I walked up there and they said, Ron, the Lord just spoke to me and told me that the books that you're carrying, the, things that you're doing, 
you're not going to do them anymore the way you think. But the books that you're going to carry, not the books that you buy, but the books that you penned. Mm -hmm. And that you're going to reach a lot of men, but you're going to suffer for it first. And right after that, about 2003, uh, got into a car accident. Um, me and my three sons, um, miraculously, we, we, we made out of it, um, hit several trees on, tw on 24. Um, from that point, uh, I lost my marriage, I lost my job, and I lost my home. Uh, just uh, went from making a lot of money down to making about 13,000. <laughs> uh, had a, had a surgery, and things just looked like it was going downhill. But then I realized the uh, message that the person gave me and the prophetic word that you're going to be somebody, but you got to be broken. And it's through that that I realized that, you know, now I can reach men because I can't reach men by just sitting up there and just saying, hey, or, you know, going through the um, educational, reading books. Lifetime. You can't reach men. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. What are your rewards for what you do? Heaven. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 it's heaven, man. I mean, yeah. um, it, my reward now through my brokenness is to hear him say, well done, now good and faithful servant, mm. you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, just, I, just want, I just want to win souls. And if that means through coaching to get them to where they go or, you know, through ministry, you know, I just want to help people win souls. I'm not out there to push people in anything because they got to come on their own. That's why I like what Jesus said, you know, to whomsoever will, you know. And he always used that word might. And that word might in the Bible is a, is a, is a grace word, mm -hmm. you know. He don't force people. He wants people to come free willing. See, when you force people, you know, then after a while they're only there for a season. Mm -hmm. But people are there for a lifetime because they made a choice. And so my reward is to see you successful, see you happy, even you, man, and just blow up. And then now I'm saying, okay, this is what it's all about. Yeah. And it brings me joy. Wow. That's my reward. Man, that's beautiful. I know that our cameraman, Ron, he talks about you a lot in terms of you being an inspiration. And, and we finally got you on the program. And I see why. I mean, I can see the passion and, and the presence of God in your life and helping you to make that transformation. And there's a lot of men that they allow their brokenness to hold them stagnant to life and not begin to tap into the greatness. I think one of the powerful things you said in the early part of this, this show is about knowing who you are, coming to that state of awareness and how that brings about change and how mm -hmm. that brings about a transformation and a renewing of the mind to wake up. You know, we're constantly talking about men to wake up to who they are in God. Uh, as we, as we approach to the last minutes of this program, what word that resonates uh, in your heart now uh, about men to, that is going to help them or to empower them or to even want to, to engage uh, into this dialogue with you and your organization uh, to help empower them to be better men? What words that come to your heart and your mind that God has really been placing there uh, for you to really hold almost like a beacon to say, hey, yeah, this is it, this is it, and I need to continue to push this message? My um, best friend, who is also a minister, uh, passed away some years ago, and he acts like a brother. I don't have no brothers, and, and we were so close. And, and when he passed away, I was in St. Louis, and I was on my way um, to the airport to go home to the, um, the funeral. And when I was sitting in the airport, I was saying, man, God, we both were talking about, you know, starting churches. You know, I remember him calling me and saying, Brother Hassan, you can do this. You can do it. It's in you. God put it in you. And we were just encouraging one another, man. It, it, it was powerful, you know, and... and you know, here go a guy that, you know, had problems with his lungs, you know, um, from working in the coal mines in West Virginia. He was a brother that well, went through a whole lot, even with his family, but yet was encouraging me and saying, you can do this, man. It's in you. I see it in you. He said, make it happen. He said, we can do this, brother. He just called me and just say things like that. Well, when I was sitting in the airport, I thought about all that. I thought about, you know, writing books that I don't even like to write. You hardly, hardly be reading, you know. Mm -hmm. I read because I have to is, is a part of the business. But, you know, I said, God, what I'm going to do? And then God, you know, um, allowed me to take out a pen. And I wrote this quote. And it says, do what you were called to do when you were called to do it while you still can do it. Mm -hmm. Because you'll never know when he will call you from doing it. Mm -hmm. And wow. so I use that to inspire me and other men and say, if it's in you, do it because you never know when he will call you from doing it. Wow, that's powerful. So make it happen. Man. And that's what I'm here to do, to help you to make it happen. Wow, 